Right, now I know you're looking at that title and going, um, well, Jules, you absolute swamp dog, I have heard of all of the X-Men, and of course people have heard of most of these, as they've appeared in a comic line that is one of the most successful brands ever. But you know what? Just take a moment and let me explain. Sure, you might have heard of some of these X-Men that appear on this, albeit slightly clickbaity titled list, but the average Joe might have no clue about them because, shocker, you can be a superhero and an X-Men fan without having read every single comic. So therefore, this is a list designed to entertain as much as it is to help educate fans of the next evolutionary step of mankind. And I hope that you enjoy it, my friends. As I am Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most interesting X-Men you've probably never heard of. Number 10, Sage. Sage was first introduced in the 1980s as Tessa, a member of the Hellfire Club and a personal assistant to Sebastian Shaw. However, it was later revealed that she was really a spy working for Professor X. Tessa had met Charles Xavier years ago when she saved him from a less than subtly named alien called Lucifer and became one of his first recruits for the X-Men. However, instead of her actually adding her to the team, he sent her to spy on the Hellfire Club, expecting that they could be a problem in the future. And <laughs> he wasn't wrong. After her cover was blown, Sage joined the X-Men properly. She helped a team led by Storm find diaries written by the prophetic mutant Destiny before leaving to help Sunspot take over the Hellfire Club. Since then, she's appeared on the spin-off Team Excalibur and even pitched in with the awfully named Extreme X-Men. But since then, she's been off the pages. And part of what makes writers reluctant to use Sage is just because of how vague and arbitrarily thrown together her powers are. Apart from telepathy, she also has superhuman mental processing, which she usually just translates to is good at computers and can jumpstart other mutants' powers, which pretty much gives them the ability to resolve whatever plot that they're in. It's handy, but it also encourages lazy writing. Number 9. Marrow Marrow was a member of the underground community of Morlocks and was one of the few to survive Mr. Sinister's attempts to wipe them out. Afterwards, she was taken in by the Morlocks leader Callisto, who became like a mother to her. Marrow has the ability to enhance her skeletal structure, meaning that she's able to cover herself with a bone armor or fashion it into spikes. Initially, her powers caused her a great deal of pain, and this contributed to her, let's just say, already fiery personality. However, when Callisto was injured, Marrow then took her to the X-Men for help and ended up joining the team. But this stint wasn't to be permanent, as Marrow would then strike out on her own and disappeared from the team. When she next was featured in a major way, it was when Scarlet Witch depowered 90% of all mutants, and while Marrow lost her powers, her bony protrusions remained. This led her to take risky experiments to control the growth, which ended terribly for Marrow, but she then led a new version of X-Force to take revenge on those responsible. Number 8. X-Man Like everything related to Scott Summers, the origins of X-Man are stupendously convoluted. When the powerful mutant Legion went back in time to kill Magneto, he accidentally killed Charles Xavier instead. This created a new timeline known as the Age of Apocalypse, where N. Sabah Nur was able to take over the world without the X-Men to oppose him. In this new reality, Mr. Sinister used a combination of Cyclopses and Jean Grey's DNA to create the ultimate mutant, a psychic powerful enough to destroy Apocalypse should he ever turn against Sinister, and he named him Nate Grey. Nate escaped from Sinister, though, thanks to the help of his unknowing father, and joined the fight against Apocalypse. In the final battle, Nate vanished into the reality-warping Macran... Macran? Macran. McCran Crystal as the timeline was restored, re-emerging into the main Marvel Universe where Scott and Jean now had to deal with having a third child from an alternate timeline. Did you catch all of that? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, but the short story is, is that X-Man is bloody powerful. So much so that when Nate died, his essence was so strong that it dissipated across the world and he was able to reform once more. Not too shabby. Number 7. Warpath With giant size X-Men number 1, we saw a complete reinvention of the music mutant team by replacing its original members with a new group of multicultural heroes. Alongside soon-to-be classics like Colossus and Wolverine was John Proudstar, a Native American man who went by the codename Thunderbird. Then he died. Oh. 
Okay then. Well, luckily we're not talking about this guy, but about his brother, James Proudstar. Now, James Proudstar was born with the same mutant abilities of superhuman strength and endurance as his brother and took up the Thunderbird mantle after his death. Initially, he blamed the X-Men for John's death and joined Emma Frost's team of Hellions to get revenge. However, he later realized the X-Men weren't to blame and quit the Hellions to return to his reservation. Later on, James was recruited by Cable to join his team X-Force. He accepted and took up the new code name Warpath. Warpath served on the team until it was disbanded and was one of the first recruits when Wolverine reformed the team as a preemptive strike force. Warpath quit X-Force after the events of Necrotia, in which he fought against an army of dead mutants, including the original Thunderbird. James was able to stop the vampire controlling them by stabbing her through the heart with a dagger, and having freed all the souls and having put his brother to rest, James retired from the X-Force in peace. Number 6. Thunderbird 3 And who should take his place but the third Thunderbird, Thunder 3rd, if you will, and no relation to the Proud Star Brothers. However, he was the first Indian member of the X-Men. This Thunderbird had the ability to shoot plasma from his hands, and why exactly Marvel decided to name a man with no ties to Native American culture or whose powers didn't involve electricity, flying or owning a rocket Thunderbird is anyone's guess, and even less so when you learn that he originally was going to be named after Agni, the Hindu god of fire. However, he still a really interesting character, mainly because he didn't actually want to use his powers as he struggled to control them. Oh, and he also had a rough love life, seeing as he managed to convince Psylocke to dump Archangel and go out with him instead, only for her to die a few issues later. Rough. However, not as rough as being forgotten about, which seems to be the case for Thunderbird 3, as writers just haven't used him in ages, which is pretty ironic, seeing as in a previous story, the time traveller Bishop told him that in his future, out of all the X-Men, Thunderbird was the only one that people remembered. Number 5. Kid Omega During Grant Morrison's new X-Men, the Xavier Institute once again opened its doors to young mutants, and one of this new batch of students was a boy named Quentin Quire. Quentin's incredible psychic abilities and genius intellect made him stand out from the other students, and he soon became Xavier's prized pupil. However, he was also unpopular and unfortunately frequently bullied, and upon finding out that he was also adopted, it caused him to snap, dub himself Kid Omega, and he started a riot within the Institute. Even though it looked like he died as a result of the incursion, Kid Omega popped up again when Wolverine approached the mutant to reform and rejoin. This time, Choir proved himself as a student, helping the X-Men on numerous occasions and even forming a close bond with Wolverine. He eventually graduated and became an assistant at the school, but the joy was unfortunately short-lived as he saw a future vision of his own death, and in an effort to avoid that fate, he isolated himself from the superhero community and hasn't been seen since. Number 4. Mimic While everyone knows the original X-Men team was comprised of Cyclops, Beast, Iceman, Angel, and Marvel Girl, not much is said about their first recruit, Mimic, who joined the team three years after they were formed. Calvin Rankin was not actually a mutant, instead a serum that he had gave him the power to copy the abilities of anyone around him, and initially he joined the X-Men in an attempt to steal their powers. But later, he became a hero for real when he seemingly sacrificed himself to stop the Hulk. I say seemingly because with all good comic book heroes, he just didn't know when to stay dead, and even ended up joining the Dark X-Men under Norman Osborn. Things, as you can imagine, didn't go too well for him, but soon, after some back and forth between good and evil, he finally settled in the Jean Grey Institute as a teacher. Number 3. Warlock Warlock is a member of a race of robotic aliens called the Technarchy, and like all members of his race, Warlock can shapeshift into any form he chooses. He can also drain the life energy out of any living creature, which makes me think that he and your mum must be of the same species because she sucks the absolute life out of me at any given chance. And yes, and yes, that was my rather lightheaded one per list. However, unlike the rest of his society, Warlock refuses to use his powers for evil and instead joins Xavier's team to form the New Mutants. And it's here that Warlock becomes better best friends with Doug Ramsey, who went by Cypher. In battle, Warlock would always go out of his way to protect Cypher, which, as you might expect from being saved all the time, actually served to lower Doug's self-esteem. However, Warlock should have been looking after himself, because he unfortunately died at the hands of Cyborg Cameron Hodge, only to be reborn as a weird combination of both Warlock's body and Cypher's memories, called Douglock. Yep. That was his name. Number 2. Blink Now, Blink might be more well-known than some others on this list because of her appearances in The Gifted, but we're not going to be talking about this version of Blink, but actually the original comic book iteration which held a, pun incoming, 
Blink and you'll miss its appearance as a prisoner of the Phalanx, a group of mutant-hating humans who had augmented themselves with Warlock's technology. Blink was a teleporter whose powers were unstable and shredded anything nearby. She and her captors were killed when she lost control of her Blink wave and tore them all apart. It's a real shame because the idea of a teleporting bomb that shreds people to ribbons could have been really useful, a powerful ally or a deadly enemy to the X-Men, and it's an idea that some are considering might be resurrected, as this is after all comic books and, like I said before, no one stays dead forever. And number one, Dr. Nemesis. Dr. Nemesis is actually one of Marvel's earliest heroes, first appearing as a masked crime fighter in 1941, but was unfortunately forgotten about until he was dusted off years later as a mutant with a supreme intellect and an increased lifespan. After, let's just say, a supremely awkward period of time working with the Nazis, he saw the error of his way and spent the next decades hunting down those same Nazis and their clones because obviously they've always got clones, with his trusty hypodermic needle gun, which sounds absolutely terrifying when you say it out loud. Dr. Nemesis was invited by Beast to join the X Club, a group of the world's greatest scientists who were dedicated to solving the problems of mutant kind. Bradley went on through a number of bizarre adventures, even travelling back to meet his own father and then getting possessed by a psychic squid. Casual.